Wall Street is getting serious about industry disruption, and there are a handful of ETFs focused on just that. ARK Invest products are built to capitalize on disruptive forces like artificial intelligence, perhaps robotics, genomics, next generation internet, you name it. And the woman behind them is here with us today. Kathy Wood is the founder, CEO, and chief investment officer at ARK Invest. She joins us here now at Post 9. Kathy, thank you so much for being here. Great to be here, Don. So Tim had earlier mentioned this idea of actively managed ETFs, the ones that don't necessarily track just the S&P or some broader index. Is it fair to characterize ARK Invest as one of those actively managed types ETFs? Yes, yes. We trade uh, practically every day, so we're very active. Over the last couple of years, Kathy Wood, founder and CEO of ARK Invest, has emerged as the newest star on Wall Street. Skyrocketing to fame as her funds crush the market, last year her flagship ARK Innovation ETF was up over 150%. With this impressive performance, Kathy Wood's ETFs have had no problem attracting investor money, and now she manages over $50 billion in assets. This was all achieved with a strategy of investing in companies she believes are the leaders, enablers, and beneficiaries of disruptive innovation. Although Kathy Wood had an amazing 2020, the problem is when there's enough players in a game of chance, someone is bound to luck out and win big on any given year. So is Kathy Wood and ARK Invest the real deal? Or was 2020 just a lucky year for them? Is ARK really investing in disruptive innovation? Or is this another Wall Street facade meant to lure in naive investors and charge them high management fees? In this video, we're going to answer these questions and the truths that were uncovered may surprise you. That's the real opportunity. The dream was too early. Anyone who chased it got burned. Today, they're afraid they should be moving into it. In 1976, Kathy Wood attended the University of Southern California to study economics and finance. There she met her mentor, famed economist and inventor of the Laffer Curve, Arthur Laffer. Few people in history have revolutionized economic thought and policy like Dr. Art Laffer. This relationship wound up playing a major role in her investment career later on. After graduating from USC in 1981, Kathy Wood moved to New York City to begin her career at Jenison Associates. After leaving Jenison as a managing director, she did a brief stint at Tupelo Capital Services as a partner before joining Alliance Bernstein in 2001 as their chief investment officer. And it was during her time as CIO that she got to experience the buildup and onset of the 2008 financial crisis. 2008, 2009 was a wake up call for the financial world, truly. Two years prior to that, I had become very confused about what was going on in the world. There were all kinds of conflicting signals. So commodity prices, including oil prices, soaring, and interest rates starting to tip down, and regulators in the United States saying, we don't think we like these exotic home equity loans, and we're going to look more closely into them. And I began to feel that something was very wrong. So we pulled a lot of the risk out of our portfolios, anything cyclical, anything housing related. And we did very poorly that year. I thought being up 5% in a year when the market was up 12 or 13% that I had done a horrible job and I began to feel terrible about myself. After 13 years as CIO at Alliance Bernstein, she founded the company that we know her for today, ARK Investment Management. So now that we know Kathy Wood's background and that her firm, ARK Invest, has outperformed the market over the last few years, we can now take a deeper look into the inner workings of ARK 
and start asking the important questions. Whenever I'm doing a due diligence on a particular fund or fund manager, I ask two main questions. What is their long-term track record, you know, at least a decade? And what is their investment philosophy and strategy? You would think that for someone uh, who's been labeled as potentially the next Warren Buffett by some news outlets, you would think that that particular person would have a time-tested investment strategy that continuously beat the market, just like Warren Buffett, right? Over the course of Kathy Wood's 40-year career, she's been directly responsible for managing portfolios since 2001. Here we could see her track record from 2001 through the end of 2010, and her equity managed account composite achieved annualized net returns of 0.81%. So if you would have invested your money with her in 2001, she would have underperformed the S&P 500 net of fees and even underperformed the 2.4% average annual rate of inflation. This is over a decade long track record, so it's enough time for us to start forming an opinion about her investment abilities. After her time at Alliance Bernstein, she founded ARK Invest in 2014. And by her own admission, these underperformance issues persisted. I funded it for the first three years all by myself. Uh, and for the first three years, our assets didn't grow that much. And I thought, oh my goodness, what have I done? Every two weeks, there was a, an exit of a significant amount of my wealth into the company. And I would kneel down and say, okay, God, you're in control. Even if this company fails, I know I've done the right thing. This is a walk of faith for me. Your will be done. Of Kathy Wood's verified 20-year track record where she was in charge of managing portfolios, we can determine that net of fees, she underperformed the S&P 500 for the first 16 and a half years. So from 2001 to the middle of 2017. Then for the next two and a half years, she modestly outperformed the benchmarks. So from middle of 2017 to early 2020. And then over the last year or so, after March's, uh, March 2020 correction, she massively outperformed the market. Since short-term performance doesn't really tell the whole story, I'm more so interested in the reasoning and analysis that guides a portfolio manager's judgment. If the reasoning and analysis are sound, the performance is going to follow. To ARK's credit, they're quite transparent about their operation. They primarily create actively managed ETFs themed by industries they believe are experiencing the most innovative disruption. These industries include DNA sequencing, robotics, energy storage, artificial intelligence, and blockchain technology. Investing in new technology early on is very risky for similar reasons why angel investing is so risky. It may be several years or even decades before that technology has industrial uses, and even if that industry grows in the future, it's hard to know which companies will be winners. If you were to predict the smartphone boom in 2008, you would have been correct. But if you invested in BlackBerry, the industry leader at the time, you would have lost money. That's why blindly investing in future technologies is so difficult and proper analysis of each individual company is so important. If you read ARK's research approach, they state, as part of its research process, ARK's investment team creates investment briefs and valuation models informed by top-down and bottom-up inputs. ARK uses a proprietary scoring system to evaluate stocks and to monitor the underlying investment thesis. If you go to ARK's proprietary scoring system, their key scoring metrics are company people and culture, execution, barriers to entry, product leadership, valuation, and thesis risk. What stood out the most to me was the valuation metric, which for value investors is the most important. Rather than listing the company's revenue, debt, gross profit margins, expenses, 
cash flows, or anything financial, it states an arbitrary rate of return over five years. Since this doesn't explain anything, the best way to determine how ARK values each business is to look into the financial model of their largest holding, Tesla. ARK recently gave Tesla's stock price a target of $3,000 by 2025. I downloaded their actual financial model off GitHub to see their input assumptions. I immediately saw major issues with their model. First they assume car sales go from half a million units as of last year to over 10 million in 2025. That's a 20 fold increase or an 83% yearly rate of growth. Also revenue from car sales goes from 25 billion last year to 366 billion in 2025, which is almost a 15 fold increase. These are extremely optimistic numbers given forecasts of all electric vehicle sales being around 11 million units in 2025. Not only that, but their model assumes 6.3 billion in insurance revenue and 327 billion in ride hail service revenue. That brings Tesla's 2025 total revenue to about $700 billion. The projection for vehicle sales may have been wildly ambitious, but the insurance and ride hail revenue projections are just plain wild. Tesla insurance was introduced in late 2019 and generated no significant revenue last year, but ARK thinks it'll be pulling in over $6 billion four years from now. And if that wasn't bad enough, both Tesla's human-driven and fully autonomous robo-taxi ride-hailing network, which would be in direct competition with Uber and Lyft, doesn't even exist yet. It's just a service that Elon Musk plans to offer Tesla owners in the future. But ARK still finds it totally reasonable to think that something that doesn't even exist yet and has no concrete plans for the future will be pulling in $327 billion in revenue four years from now. That's roughly 25 times Uber's and Lyft's total revenue combined, and at 50% EBITDA margins no less. This is not speculation, this is just fantasy. And if that wasn't bad enough, in this model Tesla's gross margin magically jumps from 21% from last year, which is pretty decent for a car company, to 50% four years from now, giving them a forecasted market cap of almost $4 trillion. So after taking a look at ARK's investment strategy and financial models, I winded up having more questions than answers. Like why do they invest in companies based on a futuristic story as opposed to the business's fundamentals? Why are their valuation models loaded with all sorts of wild assumptions without much basis in reality? From those on the outside of Wall Street looking in, this appears to not make much sense. You know, maybe it's a, an error on their part or something. But for those who really understand how these fund managers make money, it all makes perfect sense. Too much greed. Yeah, one look at the newly launched ARK Space Exploration ETF tells you everything you need to know about how managers can't resist creating new funds, even if there's no reason for them to exist. They love to create ETFs. They love to advertise ET ETFs. Now, look, should this fund have some quality companies that can pass as space plays? They've got Trimble, Kratos Defense, L3 Harris. Though something like L3 is mainly a high defense contractor. We have them on. You got Lockheed Martin and Boeing, which do have some space exposure, even if it's not their main business. The thing is, this fund also includes Amazon, Alphabet, and Netflix, along with some Chinese e-commerce plays, like JD.com, Alibaba, Tencent. Deer's in there, too. Yeah, Deer, the tractor company. It's ridiculous. But there aren't enough genuine space-related stocks to make a decent ETF, and the manager wants to collect that 0.75% expense ratio. Maybe, uh, I have an idea, don't launch a space ETF if you have to pad it out with Netflix and Deer. You know what? I was surprised that GameStop isn't in it because GameStop is synonymous with rocket ships over at Wall Street Bets. YOLO. The fitness industry grift. When fitness professionals sell you a dream of having a fitness model to your physique without spending hours in the gym every day, strict dieting, and performance enhancing drugs. The dating industry grift. When dating coaches sell you the secret strategy to attract any woman, regardless of your looks, income, or social status. The business guru grift. 
when fake business gurus sell you the secret system for creating an online business that'll make you rich quickly and easily. And the biggest and most lucrative of them all, the Wall Street grift. When money managers who've underperformed the S&P 500 for most of their careers sell you a story that could produce amazing future returns, all while charging you high fees. Like Jim Cramer mentioned, ARK collects a minimum of 0.75% in management fees on all their ETFs. This may not sound like a lot, but when compared to Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF, which has an expense ratio of 0.03%, that would make ARK's fee structure 25 times higher. And given the fact that they currently manage over $50 billion in assets, that generates over $400 million in fees for them yearly. But you're thinking, she must be performing well or else people would pull their money out of her funds, right? Well, yes and no. Yes, if her funds are performing well, she can claim that her investment strategy is correct. And no, if her funds aren't performing well, she can just claim that her strategy is forward thinking and has a long time horizon due to the nature of investing in new technologies. Any large decline in her fund's value can simply be written off as short-term volatility while the long-term story doesn't change. For money managers, the name of the game is to get your money and charge high management fees for as long as possible. It's more about selling a story than actually investing. Whether you get the returns they marketed is almost irrelevant. Virtually all the top money managers that actually beat the S&P 500 don't accept capital from the public, and many just have a family office where they solely invest their personal funds. As for ARK's incredible returns last year, I mentioned that in three of ARK's ETFs, Tesla is by far their largest holding, with a total of over $4 billion invested. When charted, you can see the S&P 500 returned over 18% last year, ARK's Innovation ETF with Tesla as their top holding returned over 150% last year, and Tesla itself rocketed up 743% last year. The correlation between ARK's funds and Tesla stock is so strong that in March, when Tesla shares started to dip and take ARK down with it, they released a report that we just looked at giving Tesla a $3,000 price target. In my opinion, this report was a clear attempt to influence the stock price. After doing research on Kathy Wood and ARK Invest, I actually don't think that, uh, you know, they're doing anything nefarious or they're trying to deceive people, despite how I may come across. Uh, I actually do think that she believes the stuff that she's saying. That doesn't mean she's right. But I do think she's an honest actor. And even... You know, stuff like the Tesla valuation model, which to you and I may seem ridiculous, to them may just be very optimistic, you know, forward thinking, you know, assumptions. The ultimate lesson from all this is that if we're going to put our money into an ETF or with a fund manager, the onus is on us to do our research and our due diligence because these Wall Street professionals are not looking out for you and I, they're looking out for themselves. Kathy Wood has been in Wall Street for 40 years now, and she knows how to play the game. When I was doing research on this, and I was thinking like, you know, what is a good way to summarize this and express my opinion on, you know, how I think about ARK's ETFs. Um, and what came to mind were two very famous Wall Street quotes. One is, during a bull market, everyone looks like a genius. And the other one is, it actually came from Warren Buffett. And it goes, <laughs> uh, it's not until the tide goes out that you see who's swimming naked. So, you know, the question stands. Is Kathy Wood really an investing genius? Or is ARK Invest swimming naked in the middle of the biggest bull market in US history. I'll let you decide. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.
Free squat, 270. I'm rolling. Ooh, ask me an OG. Get no focus. I'm whoa, baby like oceans. She brownies, get potions.